So let's program an Alaris pump to run a Pitocin infusion for an LND patient. Here we have a bag that matches the protocol of 30 units of Pitocin and 500 milliliters of normal saline. I've already primed the tubing, made sure that the patient's ID matches with the orders, and I've assessed the insertion site of the IV catheter to make sure that they are all asymptomatic. The pump has already had the tubing placed inside of one of the channels so that we can focus on the programming. I'm going to start by initiating the systems on button. You will see that both of these modules or channels begin to light up as the machine boots up. And the center is asking whether this is a new patient or not. I'm going to go ahead and select that it is a new patient so that we can see how that goes. We've last used labor and delivery as the patient environment and we will continue to use that for this Pitocin. It's going to ask me to enter a patient ID. I can use a patient ID with letters or with a number. For this demonstration, I'm going to program the patient ID as one, one, two, three. I'm going to need to confirm that. And now it's set showing me a patient ID of one, two, three. I could obviously use the medical record number and that would give me an extra set of identification or matching of the pump to the patient. I need to select one of these channels to program. Perhaps I could run some normal saline in one channel and I'm going to go ahead and of course program the Pitocin in the channel that has that tubing in it. I'm going to select channel B because that's what the Pitocin is in. Once I select it, it's going to give me some options we're going to use the pre-programmed options such as guardrails drugs. Guardrails is a type of a program that helps improve patient safety by giving some advice and some guidance as we program the pump. I need to find the drug which would be oxytocin and here we have oxytocin or pitocin with the O's I'm going to select that. I have a couple of options here. It asks me, am I using a mixture of 20 units in 1,000 milliliters, or do I need to tell the pump what the concentration is that I have? I need to tell the pump the concentration that I have because I'm using 30 units of Pitocin in 500 milliliters. It's going to ask me to verify that. Do I indeed want to program the pump telling it how many units and how many milliliters. That's correct. Yes. So the drug amount now, and I'm going to look again in my bag and verify it, and see that I have 30 units of Pitocin and 500 milliliters. This is also a good time to recheck the MAR and make sure that we are doing this correctly. So here I've select drug amount and then I need to put in the number using the pad below 30. Then I can go and select the dilutant volume again is 500. So it's calculating here that I have 60 milliunits per milliliter. The dosing is already selected here, milliunits a minute the time units of minutes and patient's weight is not used. At the bottom I see a next. I'm going to select next. So now it's giving me a warning. It says that the concentration exceeds guardrails limits. Is this true? Yes it is true because the protocol that we are using has us using this concentrated Pitocin of 30 units per 500 milliliters. Now I need to select the dose and when I select the dose it is going to go ahead and calculate for me the milliliters per hour. 
that beeping that you hear and any alarms that you want to dismiss can be dismissed by using the silence button. Remember that silence is golden. In the protocol, perhaps we're going to start with a dose of 2 milli units per minute. And let's say the doctor, of course, ordered that 2 milli units a minute to begin with the induction of labor. Selected 2 and now it's telling me how many milliliters an hour that needs to be. I've got to select the volume to be effused, how much volume. So for this induction of labor, I would like to be reminded that in so many minutes or so many, maybe 30 minutes or an hour, then I need to check again if I need to change the concentration depending upon the contractions. Even though I'm going to be monitoring the patient the full time and with the fetal monitoring while she's receiving the Pitocin, I still could do with a little extra reminder. I'm going to go ahead and just tell the pump to put in one milliliter so that it will alarm when that one milliliter is in and I can attend to the patient see if I need to do more. I'm going to start You'll see that the pump then is green. Thank goodness, there's no air in the line. There's no occlusions. The roller clamp is undone. Patient's IV site is going well. And the label pops up that there's two milli units a minute of oxytocin infusing. So let's say that the patient is not progressing well with the labor and we need to increase this amount. I can Go ahead and simply do that by going to channel select, changing the dose. I'm going to do this to three. If I needed to adjust the volume, I could do that as well. And then I have the milliliters per hour. With this concentration, we have units per minute equaling milliliters per hour. Let's go ahead and hit start.